Hi, I've been asked to give some advice on choosing an object which you want to want to bless or charge with energies later and how to choose the right object, how important are things like size, shape, colour and material. Um, size wise it's very important to note that bigger is more powerful but powerful is not always better. Um, especially if you're using crystals. Crystals have the tendency to, in a way, bend the energy grid a little bit. So they draw power to themselves. So by having a crystal somewhere, like if you're wearing a crystal, more energy will flow towards you. Which can be, of course, very nice, very energizing, very helpful, very healing. Um, but if you get a really, really huge crystal, then actually the energy flow in the whole area will get warped, especially if you get a whole cluster of really huge crystals, then the area, a large, very large area can be affected and energies can get warped. And energies can be magnified by the crystals, but crystals are in a way blind. They will magnify all energies. So any flaw, any imperfection will also be magnified and it can create a lot of problems because the energies will become too strong to deal with, to harmonize yourself. So they're not anymore on a human scale. So in general, I would advise people not to get crystals which are bigger than your hand. This is about the size of crystal which can be quite powerful, which can do plenty for your uh, for the room you're in or uh, the place you work but the energy is not yet so powerful that they really create big distortions which will upset your neighbor's energy flows or will become too strong for you to be able to deal with. Um, in general you also don't want the crystal to be smaller than your thumb, um, the upper part of your thumb. Because if the crystal is too small, it will just have too little power, too little energy to really create an effect. And these are very, very general rules of thumb. Some crystals are by nature much more powerful, so a smaller crystal will suffice. For instance, if you have a sapphire, which is a very powerful stone, just a tiny sapphire will already generate really a lot of power. You don't need huge blocks of sapphire like this. The other thing is worked or not worked. So certain natural materials um, have the advantage that there can be a spirit living in them and that they have you know, already energy channels so energy can flow through them much more easily if you get uh, an item which is made of bone for instance. It is also a little bit um, trickier because if you have an object which has energy channels if you just charge it the charge will very easily flow out so if your idea is I will charge an object and then that charge will slowly dissipate over time or it will stay there for a few months or even a few years then you should use an object made of metal or made of stone not uh, material which has been organic because the charge will just flow out, will dissipate because there's constantly energy flowing through the object taking a little bit of the charge with it. So if you want to use an object to distribute the charge then it is ideal. Use a piece of cloth or something else, something cotton or wool or whatever, put the energy in it and as the wind blows past, blows through it the energies will also dissipate, go along with the wind and spread all over the house or all over your neighborhood even. You can affect quite a large area by charging objects made of natural materials and then allowing the charge to dissipate through the wind, through the water. So these can be also significant choices. Uh, the color of the object um, can give an indication as to the type of energies, the type of vibrations which are natural for it. 
Um, so if you look at the spectrum, the, the red earthy colors have the lowest vibration, while the purplish violet colors have the highest vibration. Look at it as a rainbow. So if you want to have a very high energy somewhere, either as a charge or as a conduit, and you make the object a red or a yellow one, it's not going to work as well as when you would make it white or violet. And the same goes for having a more earthing, grounding, healing charge. You tend to want to use brownish colors, ochres, uh, colors like this, which will provide a strong healing and supporting effect, which you simply cannot get from something if you make it a very nice azure blue. So color of an object really also determines what energy is natural to it and if you try to put in an energy very similar to the natural energy then it can hold it. It has a capacity for storing or working with those energies. And the more alien the energy is to the, the object's own energy, the worse the object will be, the worse the object will function. So this makes it also quite tricky to use certain materials like uh, glass, like polystyrene, uh, like plastic, uh, to create very good energetic objects from. Um, like they may be in a certain shape or in a certain form or uh, in the likeness of a deity or of a saint, but the material itself will find it very hard to hold any charge or to allow the energies to flow through easily. So glass, um, also porcelain, um, plastics, um, they're not as good as stone, as metal. Um, and when you come to the choice in the, between porcelain and clay, stone there's something to be said for both of them the um, thing is if you do use a, a block of stone it has its own spirit in it stone is alive just like crystals are alive it is possible to kill the stone by working it by cutting pieces of it it will the spirit will find that it does not enjoy being cut up or being maimed or being twisted into a shape which considers unnatural and it will leave and if the spirit has left then in a way the stone is very similar to porcelain or clay it has a material energy but there is no more spirit there but as a material it will hold a charge quite nicely and the advantage in a way of using uh, clay or porcelain is that as a creator you can put your own energy in it and if you yourself, while you're doing it, you're in a very divine state or very connected to the divine state while doing it, you're praying, you're having visions, you're listening to the right music, um, then it, the object you create will have a lot more pull towards the divine energies than an object merely made of such a material. So making uh, an object yourself while being in the right state of mind can result in a much more powerful object. With stone you have to either say like okay I'm going to cut it and then the spirit will leave but the stone itself will not absorb your own energy as well as clay or porcelain will. Um, so then it would be in a way worse than uh, using a clay. Stone can be of a specific sort or a specific crystal so that it will attract those energies and then it can be and that can be a benefit why you want to use the stone. Um, personally I like to work together so I would choose not to harm the stone too much but rather to see if the spirit of the stone would be willing to harbor such an energy, work with such an energy, amplify such an energy. And even though the stone itself may not be in a very good or very beautiful likeness, um, it may not be very aesthetically pleasing, just a little bit of polished, um, 
because the spirit of the stone is there and is actively participating, the fact can be very beneficial. Um, it is important to note that, especially if you want to work with the Christian tradition, many Christian powers, they regard powers of nature and lower vibrations as being negative, as being vile, as being satanic. Um, so within the Christian tradition, working with natural materials can sometimes backfire because that power will not want to live in an object which is natural, which is in a way part of nature because nature and instinct itself, depending on what brand of Christianity you follow, are considered satanic, evil and wrong in many, many ways. So you also have to consider very much the tradition. Um, for instance, if you also want to use um, a Buddhistic ritual to make something. In Buddhism, everything is transitory, so the object you make should also be transitory. It should do its work, present its things and then be allowed also to move on, move forward, move, continue its movement. So things like sand mandalas for instance or uh, things which are meant to be burned, um, they tend to be very good receptacles for these energies because the object itself is in a similar flow of growth and rebirth as is very essential to the tradition. So every tradition has materials or shapes or objects which, it's, uh, which are in a way natural to it, beneficial to it. So there's not an easy answer as to what material is best to use or what shape is best. In shapes, it is also important to note that usually more upright, angular shapes are considered more masculine uh, because those old male bodies are more like that, but more rounded, flowing shapes are considered to be more feminine. Um, Dome-like shapes tend to be good for uh, protective things, while if it is more you could say sparked or arced upward, uh, they're more useful for in a way the act of penetrating, so more useful for offensive purposes. And of course, you have the planetary symbolism and um, lots of other forms and shapes you can use to attract a specific power. Um, the three basic shapes are, of course, the circle, uh, which represents unity. Um, also continuation of energy, so it's a very nice protective symbol. Um, there's the square. Uh, the square is a representation of this world or another world, another dimension. So especially if you want to work transdimensional, squares are very useful. And you have the, the triangle, which is of course the symbol of the elements. Uh, also the symbol of fire, of transmutation of the elements. So for healing work or but for inviting a transformational energy uh, such as a higher power which can provide healing or uh, cleaning or guidance, triangle shapes are very useful. So good luck and allow yourself to be inspired, to be artistic. It's not just doing things by the book, it is really doing things with all your being. The blessing of an object or the creation of a blessed object is something which all your energy centers should be involved in, no matter what tradition you come from.